Got another indie horror film for you today. It is the season after all. It's October, though. It's always indie horror season here on The Final Cut. Today, we're looking at Beneath Us All uh, from a familiar name, director Harley Whalen, who's we, we've reviewed a number of Harley's projects before, and writer Brent Miller uh, with Beneath Us All, uh, giving us a bit of a spin on a classic uh, creature, yes. Uh, we have the story of Julie, who's about to turn 18. She's a foster child, and her foster parents aren't exactly looking forward her to leave, mostly because they aren't going to get that money. Uh, and she's now looking forward leaving her siblings behind, who she really cares for her step-siblings, her step-parents, not so much. Well, when Julie's out on a walk in the woods on her own, she comes across an item that seems to awaken a specific someone, and she finds herself uh, taking care of this individual and drawn to them. And uh, they, uh, named Frey, are pulling Julie into a darker path than the one that she foresees coming when she hits adulthood. And uh, yeah, we see how that has an effect not only on her, but her entire family, as well as the social worker who's trying to help Julie get a leg up as she heads to uh, turning 18 and being on her own. Yes, even by the poster, you could tell this is a vampire story, and it's an interesting take on it because they give it a, a Viking twist, uh, <laughs> which I did not expect. There's a period segment in the beginning, which looked really well. I liked how they handled that quite a bit, and, and giving it this uh, little extra uh, spin on things, I thought made it refreshing and interesting enough to see where they were going. Now, uh, Julie, in the modern times, the, the foster child, uh, uh, she, uh, played by Angelina uh, Danielle uh, Kama, I thought she did fantastic in here as this girl who, uh, yeah, she's really torn between uh, different choices uh, that she makes, as well as, you know, she loves her, her siblings quite a bit, and she is reluctant to get help from the social worker because she feels the system's kind of failing her, and she has Frey, who's giving her a dark way out to an interesting life. So, yeah, you feel that conflict and that struggle, and that's thanks to the performance of Angelina. Katie Whalen plays Rebecca, who is a social worker, loved her performance as well as this woman who's taken sympathy and a, a kindness to Julie and really wants to help her quite a bit because she sees a little bit of her young self in Julie. And I love the uh, conversation these two have back and forth, the chemistry they have as well. And I really enjoyed uh, this character uh, quite a bit. Jan Bridge plays Frey, the uh, individual that Julie ends up finding in the woods, uh, played creepily just like you need him to. Uh, and, and I really enjoyed their portrayal there of what they were doing just someone that you're like telling you're telling yourself julie why why are you even hanging with this individual <laughs> you know but he brings the creepy very well now the uh foster parents are played by maria olson and uh, sean whalen and these two yeah, they are two individuals you're not going to like, but through them, the director, I think, is making a statement about foster care, as well as our social worker character, of how the system uh, really still needs some revamping and some changing on uh, how they handle foster care and following up with foster parents and such and selection in that. Uh, not saying that foster care is bad, but still relaying that there might need to be some work out there and that there's some individuals out there who take advantage of the system solely for the money, especially the Sean Whalen character is someone you're really not going to like. Uh, 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 Todd Gibbs, uh, Sean Whalen, who plays Todd Gibbs, uh, he, yeah, he's just a character you're not going to care for. Maria Olsen also is someone who you're just like, oh, come on. She's a very strict mother. But deep down, the way Maria plays her, you can feel a bit that she actually does have a soft spot for these kids. They're not just a paycheck. Uh, you know, she cares a little bit more about them uh, than her husband, Todd, and Maria plays that very well. So, yeah, overall, there's some gore in here. There's some suspenseful moments. The only thing that I really uh, didn't quite care for is it gets a little too dark in spots to where you can't really see what's going on. I understand horror film, you want to kind of keep the suspense, but at the same time, it was a little hard to tell what was going on in some scenes, and the ending just, it just frustrated me, not because it was bad, but it was because not how I wanted things to go for this story, which I guess then the director uh, was effective in that. So overall, Beneath Us All is not breaking new ground, but is an interesting take on uh, this classic vampire type story that I think you'll want to watch 
uh, you know, especially about its statements about foster care. So thank you so much for watching. Please uh, check out our Patreon if you haven't already. Subscribe down below. Help us get above our goal now of 2,500 subscribers. Can only do that with uh, your help. Thank you for your support. And until next time, remember, as always, keep that ticket stub.